Hi folks, I'm Don Meisner and I want to welcome you to another Up North NY chat. Today we're going to be chatting about lake trout fishing and you know this is a whole lot different than probably any lake trout fishing you've seen before. We're going to be with Dave Swanson and uh, Dave has a pretty unique way of catching lake trout and he's learning more about it every day but what I want to look at right now is a lake trout that Dave caught yesterday and then we'll talk about it after we take a look. It looks like a laker. It looks like a big laker. Oh man. Yeah, it's a big laker, I think. Looks like. Boy, he doesn't want to come up though. Wow, he does not want to come up. Wow, he just does not want to come in. Look at this. Taking the line out. Wow. Whew. Holy moly. Is a big fish. Holy smokes. Look at that fish. Let's see if I can get him up where you can see him. That's a good fish. Got to let him back in the water real quick. And there he goes. Whew. You know, Dave, this is, this is to me, there's going to be so many people that are going to find, not only find this fascinating, but are going to wonder how they can do this. You know, we associate catching lake trout with going out in the middle of Lake Ontario and using big heavy tackle and down 100 feet and the boat still moving and dragging them in. But this is a whole different type of fishing. And I believe that if people could experience this as I did last year, and I can't wait to do it this year, it would really be something special for them. And you've told me that there's a number of people eagerly waiting for you to find out how to do this so they can copy you. So you've told me that each day you're learning a little bit more about this. How did you happen to start using a fly rod in shallow water? Well, actually, you know how I started because you were with me the day we did it. But, uh, but I wanted to comment on something else first, and that is that was that when I first got here, uh, even though I grew up in the area and was gone for a long time and came back, I didn't really know that much about the fishing for, in particular, lake trout here. And I knew that there were that they, that had become a pretty popular species of fish to catch here. And I kept trying to find information on how to go about doing it. And every time I went on YouTube to look something up, if I'd find somebody that was uh, had a video up about fishing on Cuga Lake, they would show them catching a fish. Kind of like what we just did. Uh, and there was very little conversation about how. And it was, it, it was pretty frustrating. So I've had to kind of learn from experience. I've watched a few videos that did give me some advice, but uh, it was it, part, part of it is trying to come up with a way to help people catch fish because it's not that hard. Uh, but it does, uh, it does take some experience. And uh, this particular experience came as a result of, of you and I and our friend Rust uh, attempting to catch pickerel with fly rods on Cuba Lake and trolling in water that was about 20 feet deep. It was, a, it was about uh, almost a full month later in the year, last year, when we did that, as you recall, and the first thing that happened is one of us, and I think it was maybe Russ, hooked a lake trout trolling a, a moose look wobbler, and then it got really exciting because I think that day between the three of us, we caught six or seven lake trout. I'm pretty sure it was six or seven lake trout. I think we did catch a couple of pickerel that day, but we had no idea what we were doing. We were tra trolling in the water. I was trolling with an electric trolling motor, moving quite slowly. I bet we weren't moving more than a mile or a mile and a quarter in an hour in the water. And we completely by accident started catching fish. Uh, and 
subject subsequent to that day, I did a lot of fishing of that type where I was trolling in water that was 20 to 25 feet deep and finding fish and, and this that particular segment of time lasted about a month. Uh, and then the water started warming up to the point where the fish moved out deeper and then I couldn't do it anymore. But it's one of the more exciting types of fishing that I've figured out how to do down here. Well, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to look at some of the elements of this, of how you're either successful or unsuccessful. And one of the first things is knowing how deep those fish are going to be. And in the springtime, the big advantage to anyone that wants to do this is they don't have to be in deep water. They don't have to have some means of going down 100 feet. Now, in this case, you're fishing 20 feet. But number one, uh, I, what would you say is the most important element? The lure you use, the depth that you're fishing, the line that you, they all play a part in whether you're successful or not. So let's look at each one of those aspects. So the goal here is that anybody, anybody, if they've got a boat that's big enough to be on the water and they're fishing on a day when it isn't too rough, that they can go out without a guide and find and catch a lake trout. So let's let's cover some of these issues. Well, one, probably one of the first keys from my perspective is having uh, a fish finder. And I hate to say you need a fish finder, but it's it's particularly important to be able to know how deep you are. Uh, in the spring when the water is cool, they apparently come into shallower waters. So I found them anywhere from about 16 feet deep uh, out to... 30 feet deep. The problem is once you get out past 30 feet, it's really hard to get the fly rod, the fly line to sink that far. I think the fly line drops to about 15 feet. Uh, I'm using Cortland 333 fly line in a nine weight line. I've got a 10 weight rod, but I couldn't find that line in a 10 weight, so I bought nine weight. Uh, uh, and I let it completely out. In fact, I'm into the backing and I let it out to the point where all of the fly line itself is in the water behind the boat. I'm trolling very slowly, so the line's allowed to get down a bit. But I have to get down about 15 feet and the fish are suspended in that area. Uh, the other trick I think I've discovered is an electric trolling motor. A lot of guys will troll with the gas motors on their boats. And when you're in that shallow, I've become convinced that that spooks the fish. And they don't stay where they were. The motor spooks them off the one side or the other. And they won't come back in time to see that lure go by. Whereas I, I'm convinced that if you're trolling with the trolling motor, they're not bothered by the trolling motor. It makes a constant hum. And it's not loud. Uh, and I find fish by trolling directly behind the boat. You got guys with gas motors that are trolling, but they'll they'll have the uh, planer boards out to the sides trying to get their lures out away from the boat. They have fish hit. Uh, I think I'm about the only one I've seen down here trolling with a fly rod though. Now there's probably somebody else, uh, but I haven't seen anybody else. Uh, one of the points I wanna to make to people that haven't done this, that you don't have to be a fly fisherman. You don't have to know how to do special casting or anything. The line that Dave is talking about, the Cortland 333, is a full sinking line because you can get confused. You can go out and some are sink tip lines and some are fast sink or whatever. The, the, the way that line behaves in the water, it can really become critical. So you want a full sinking line and that line will take the fly down. You don't need any sinkers or anything else. It's going to take your fly or your spoon down to the depth that those fish are suspended. So I think that's that's a that's a big key in the fact that you can be right behind the boat. That eliminates you having to add other things like planer boards and so forth. So uh, so anyway, Dave, what else? What else about this? You talked about your speed was one point something. How critical is the speed? Every fish has a different speed of reacting to you know salmon might want something faster but lake trout are pretty slow is that correct i mean in terms of what they prefer i i i that's my reaction uh and i i have in fact i even uh, uh yesterday uh or rather the day before yesterday i had a uh a rainbow hit uh and i hooked a 
Well, I'm pretty sure it was a landlocked salmon, but I didn't get either one of them in, so I'm kind of guessing at the species because they look very similar. But uh, unfortunately, the salmon was foul hooked, and I was trolling a little bit faster. I was up about one and a half miles an hour, and I think the salmon like a faster uh, retrieve than the lake trout do. But the lake trout will hit a mile and a half an hour, and I can I can run with my trolling motor. I've got two batteries uh, hooked in parallel. I can run that 40 pound thrust motor. Uh, a long part of the day, if I wish, uh, at a mile and a half an hour. Uh, the other thing is, you, but you do have to be going fast enough if you're not. Now, I wasn't using a fly on the big fish. Uh, I was using a mooselet wobbler, and the mooselet wobbler uh, is a very light spoon, not very long. It's about three and a quarter inches long. Uh, they come in a couple, three different sizes, and 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 that's the biggest one I use. A lot of times I use even a smaller one than that. But it's very light and it's got an action when you're moving very slowly. And I jig it periodically. I don't I, I just I don't just drag it through the water, but it does have a wobble, even if you're only dragging it, that is attractive to the fish for whatever reason. I think color is important too. I use the rainbow smelt color and I found that to be the most effective. I've had other colors, just haven't caught as many fish on the other colors. One of the things that you've told me is that people are coming up to you or calling you or emailing you or whatever and saying, uh, they got to know where are you? Where are you fishing? What? And, and you've told me, but I want you to express this to everybody, that it isn't so much where you're fishing, it's how you're fishing. Because those fish, are, they aren't just all potted right in front of your cottage. They're, they're all over the place, aren't they? Well, they're, I won't say they're all over the place. They always say that 80% of the fish are in 20% of the water, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. I forget what the number is, and sometimes I think it's more like 95 and 5. But, uh, but yeah, I have, I have guys that will ask me questions on YouTube about where exactly was I fishing. And, and I can tell them, and I have told them, generally speaking, where I was, because there's no one particular location that I fishing all the time. Yeah, there's a couple of spots that seem to be a little more productive than others, but you need to know where the bait fish are, so you need to be watching that fish finder. You need to be watching where you, what your depth is, and you need to be looking for the bait fish to make sure that there are bait fish in the area, because if there are no bait fish, there's, you're less likely to bump into the bigger fish. Uh, but I can be in one particular spot and catch fish one day, and I go back to that spot the next day, and there won't be a fish in that area, but I'll move a quarter mile down the lake or a half mile down the lake, and suddenly I'm back into fish again. So it really isn't a spot necessarily as it is a matter of doing some research to figure out where they are and spending some time on the water. Now, that said, you might be able to go back to the same spot every day and catch fish every day, but I haven't found that to be true. I've found that, that, that sometimes they'll be several hundred yards away from where they were the day before. I went out yesterday. You mentioned that I caught the fish yesterday. It was actually the day before. And yesterday I went out and it was really cold and miserable. And I went to where I had seen all of the fish and I never got a hit. It just was the change in the day. They weren't there. Now, whether I could have found them someplace else or not, I don't know. But they weren't where they were the day before. And the fish aren't hitting all the time anyway. They're not... Or, or you'd be catching 25 pounders because they would just gorge and, and become bigger than ever. You know, one thing that, that I do want people to know as they watch these videos and as they watch you catch this fish, number one, no matter how great it looks, you can't imagine the feel on your hand and wrist using a fly rod and the battle that you have, the sport that it gives you in catching a trout that some people would drag in with a monstrous rod and reel with their boat never stopping, and the difference between catching them on something like this. The other thing that they can't imagine is that moment that you're holding the rod and you feel that strike. I mean, these are these are really crescendos. These are big parts of the experience, and I think no matter how, how great something looks, it even feels better. So uh, I hope that people have enjoyed learning some of this. Let's go back and look at the battle again. And I want to comment on a couple of things as it goes along. So I guess, Dave, you've hooked this fish now. The fish is hit. And it's on. Oh, wow. 
Wow. Actually, actually, Don, I had that fish on for for a, a total of six minutes, and I thought it was fifteen. <laughs> it was. Oh. It seemed so big, and the minute I the minute he hit the surface, I thought, "Oh, this is the biggest fish I've ever caught in a fly rod. I have got to get this fish in. I can't lose this fish." Uh, I, I could see that pole, that ten weight fly rod, and for people that don't know what that means, that's a pretty beefy fly rod doubled right up right over yeah he uh <laughs> that fish uh i i jokingly said he he tugs and pulls but he and he when he took off he just it, there was no stopping him it was a matter of saying i've got the drag set pretty high hard on that fly reel and it he just took the line right out as you can see uh, you know uh I, I guess you're getting ready to put him in the net here uh, did you have any idea this fish was this big? I mean, a 32-inch a lake trout is a big lake trout. That fish is about 13 pounds. And yeah. to catch that on a fly rod is, that's really amazing. Yeah, well, you probably heard me groan when I stood up because he, he was big enough that uh, getting up on these old knees wasn't that easy. Well, I got to tell you, Dave, the one thing after watching that is I wish I had been there. You know, last year we did this. And it was the first time we had done this. And I told you over and over, and I wasn't just saying this. It was one of the big fishing highlights of the year for me because there's nothing quite like holding a fly rod, knowing that there could be big, big fish down there waiting for that strike and then catching them the way that we caught them. And then the battle, and you're, you're like, oh, my gosh, these fish are so huge. It really is a special kind of fishing. And people watching this for Cayuga Lake, okay, I, I know a lot of people will probably, you'll probably see them out there after seeing this, trying to do the same thing. But the interesting thing is you can take the same techniques you were using and go to any of the waters that we have lake trout in. I can think of waters in the Adirondacks. Where in the spring, like right now, the same conditions exist. Those fish are going to come up in the water column, and they're going to hit the same lures that you were using, and people can fish them the same way. It's it's sort of a universal method that not many people have been using for years. So I I think it's really exciting. The other thing I would comment on, Don, is I also have uh, used um, flies and. Yeah, on one of my other days out, I used a, a gray ghost streamer that worked every bit as good as the Moosefolk Wobbler. So uh, there are opportunities for the purists that want to stick to flies only to be able to use uh, flies and do this kind of fishing. And you comment about when that laker hits, there's nothing like it. They slam it. And it, there's, in my mind, there's nothing more exciting. And I'd much rather be pulling fish in that way than up from 60 or 70 or 80 or 100 feet of water uh, with dipsy divers or whatever. Uh, it's just so much more exciting to do it with a fly rod. And we get to see you release the fish. And releasing a fish that's been caught in 20 feet of water is a lot different than one that's come up from 100 feet. You know, so the, so the survival rate, if you do this right, should be fantastic. And if if for some reason it doesn't work out and you hook one badly or something, they can be pretty good to eat, as you have attested by by some of the ways that you've tripped. We'll, we'll talk about that in another episode. I hope all of you have enjoyed this. I hope it's given you ways and ideas of being able to explore and enjoy your favorite lake that has lake trout. Until next time, this is Don Meisner and Dave Swanson from Up North NY. <laughs>